Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Y'all, welcome to Map Your Book Out. We are on day two, day two of our three-day book writing challenge. I just want to say hello and welcome to each and every author, each and every person um, that has decided to come and hang out with us tonight. Yesterday, we had a phenomenal time. If you had an opportunity to join us yesterday, uh, we have Prophetess Carla Clark, and we talked about writing prophetically. Uh, and, and oh man, and she activated the prophetic, was just flowing so thick in here. And then we proceeded to go into um, the writing party where we did some prophetic writing activations. And that was just such a phenomenal time in God. Many people got clarity uh, and confirmation on exactly what book they should write. And so I was just so excited. Um, and right now we have a special guest. Let me make sure that I share this out inside of um, Write With Me really quickly. I can do that now while we're talking just to make sure that we get the video. Let me share it now. So y'all, I'm sharing it into my group so I can make sure that my, my people got it. All right, I have shared it. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to make sure that I shared it inside of Right With Me. It's because um, most of the challenge activities are happening inside Right With Me. All right, so let's jump back into it. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chanelle Martin, and I'm the founder of Beyond the Book Media and Write With Me and the Map Your Book Out three-day challenge. Myself and along with my amazing team of coaches um, are have put come together and put together a program designed to help help you write and map out your book. And so like I was talking about earlier, yesterday was all about understanding, tapping into Holy Spirit um, to know exactly what book you should be writing. And today, now that you know what book, right, that you're going to write, we're going to talk about creating an outline. We'll get into that uh, in just a moment. But while you guys are coming on in, I want y'all to say hello. Hey, Eileen, hey Lisa, hey Pamela, hey Tiffany, hey Karen, hey Lisa, hey MJ, hey Ronalda, hey Andrea, hey Jess. Oh, Jess said, I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna put this comment up because you know, she said I was looking fabulous. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, hey, can y'all, can my write with me family, can someone make sure that it is pinned up at the top? I'll, I'll look and see just to make sure that they, because I know a lot of people are going to go inside of Write With Me. They're going to look. And if you wonder what Write With Me, Write With Me is our community of authors uh, where we are writing our books together. And so a lot of our challenge activities, let's see, I have put this up at the top in the event that people are looking for it. It's in there. A lot of our challenge activities like morning prayer. Hold up. Let's talk about morning prayer real quick. Okay. We're going to get to it, y'all but I got to warm y'all up while we wait for many of you to come in. Who has been going to morning prayer? I need to know in the comments. First of all, first of all, morning prayer has been getting my whole entire life. Like it has stirred me up for the whole day. Like yesterday, Crystal, she goes by Chanel Davis on here, just had us. She had me in the glory clouds. I was just like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm in glory. And then today, Dr. Monique, do y'all hear me? Was spitting straight fire, just fire out of her mouth this morning. I was like, my God, my God, my God. And then we've been having, Monique has also been doing our hour of power. If you have missed it, we have one more hour of power. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow is our last day, our finale. So you want to make sure that you come to that. An hour of power, y'all. She had y'all doing vision boards. And I love the vision boards that you guys have shared inside of Write With Me. I'm going to go back and look through and comment um, on all of them. But I mean, this has just been such a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. And as we're coming in, if you could go ahead and share this and tag your friend, tag the person you know that is supposed to be writing a book, bring them on in because we are about to jump right on in. So good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Now that I've gotten you guys' attention, we have a phenomenal speaker for today. We have Miss Joyce A. Smith, and we're going to talk through creating your outline. So if you don't have 
your handy dandy notebook or and or if you got the challenge pack how many of you got the challenge pack it was a uh it was an upsell you didn't have to buy it it was totally optional if you have this challenge pack you might want to get that out if you printed it because we're going to talk about creating your outline and you will absolutely need of uh, the 21 day planner that is inside of the challenge pack for tonight's writing party okay so make sure that uh, you guys get that printed off in time or you can use a piece of paper, but we're getting ready to go into some notes. All right. So now that I have said that, I want to talk through uh, and introduce you to Miss Joyce A. Smith. Um, after years reading work spawned from everyone else's imagination, Joyce affectionately known as J.A. Smith, put pen to paper and created a few of her own. Her first attempt was a Christmas story in the eighth grade. The class found it comical. It was meant to be a tragedy. <laughs> Later, these stories became a launching pad for multiple awards. Her debut novel, Daddy Syndrome, skits, poems, films, and several plays. An educator, a minister, and a leader in the fight for stronger families, mental health, and victims of human trafficking. Her outreach efforts include raising awareness by participating in community events, speaking engagements, and training groups for frontline work in brothels, strip clubs, and on high trafficking streets. A true educator at heart, Joyce provides small group facilitation, keynote addresses, coaching, and leadership training for organizations and nonprofits. You can learn more about Joyce by following her on all social media platforms and by visiting her website at JAS, well, jasmithproductions.com. So that's jasmithproductions.com. Now that's her official bio but let me tell you she is a friend of beyond the book media we brought her on and she teaches um a class in our boot camp and i just love her she's also a beyond the book media author as well so she is um we we are we did partner with her to help her publish her amazing book daddy syndrome and also she's participated in one of the seven day challenges and i believe you won an award i did yeah, she won an award. So, y'all, are y'all seeing a trend here? Look, we like to pick. We choose from our own. We pick from people who go through our processes, who are testimonies to this process to come back and speak. That is something that's near and dear to my heart. And um, Joyce is just a phenomenal woman whom I love dearly and who I appreciate dearly. So without further ado, Joyce, I'd love for you if you would just kind of open us up. Tell us a little bit more about you. I did my best to explain you, but I know that you can do it even better. Thank you so much, Chanel. While you were talking, I'm like, wow, who is she talking about? I can't believe <laughs> just sitting here listening to you, um, how blessed I've been to be able to do all of those things. And I'm so excited to be back on your platform again. I, I love to just share with um, your audience. I love to tell people I was talking about you today and all that you do. It is amazing how you have just grown through obedience. We were talking about that a little bit before coming onto the air. You definitely have an anointing and a gifting for what it is that you do to birth authors. And I am excited about just even being able to speak on your platform because you are just amazing. My experience with Beyond the Book Media has been amazing. I've, I've definitely grown even more in obedience. And so this has been an awesome, awesome journey for me. And I I love when I'm um, invited to actually come and speak to your audience. Thank you so much. Oh, and I forgot, we actually have an anthology <laughs> that she's also oh, yeah. part of as well. So I'm yeah. publishing an anthology uh, next month. Well, you know, it's almost next month in February. At the end of February, we will be releasing it and we're working on that. And it is an anthology of short stories and poems uh, surrounding Black Lives Matter and, the, and just, uh, just about our experiences on what it's like being Black in America. And so uh, I'm excited about that. Y'all are, y'all will learn learn more about that coming up soon but we want to talk about this three-day map your book out challenge all right well i think we can go ahead let me know in the comments if you have shared this i need y'all to give me a share and a heart that's it a share and a heart because listen one of the reasons why we've been able to be as successful as we have been one of the reasons why our authors breathe success, why when authors go through our seven day uh, writing challenges or our 21 day 
boot camps, okay, is because we use this thing called an outline. <laughs> and that's what we are going to talk about today. I know yesterday we had a fun time in glory land. We were talking about prophesying. And I believe in those things as a prophet myself, but I also believe in the practical. And so because we want to make sure that your book is mapped out, that we deliver on our promise. We promise that by the end of these three days that you are going to have clarity on the book you are supposed to write. And so we took care of the first part. That first part was making sure that you knew the book that you were supposed to write, that you were gonna be able to write from a place of obedience. Because when you're writing the right book, that's when, that's gonna prevent you from having writer's block, right? Then there's going to be grace. And then you'll know when you write the right book, there's a time, it's time, it's time step for such a time as this. And so God literally has of things in favor and open doors and opportunities that are time stamped, they're time dated based on your obedience, okay? And so, because I'm all about helping people finish things quickly, I have a grace for acceleration. And the way that we do that is through the outline, okay? All right, so, we about to jump right on in, okay? We about to jump right on in. So let's talk about this outline. Um, so Joyce, you are an English teacher and you're a writer. And I want you to share with uh, our audience, with everyone watching, give them a, like a basic high level definition of what an outline is. It's a roadmap. It's a, it's a roadmap. It, it's, it's giving you the opportunity to get where you need to be with minimal instruct, you know, direction changes with minimal interruptions. I have, I've been teaching for about 22 years. I think the years tend to run together, but listen, this is my confession before I actually, um, finished the book daddy syndrome. I was not an outliner. I have taught thousands of students, high school, college, professional writers about the outline, but I did not want to discipline myself to actually write an outline. Oh, I can just flow how I want to flow, you know, and what I realized was that if I didn't have that roadmap, I was wasting time. And so when we're thinking about the outline, it, it's a roadmap. It minimizes distraction. And even with your your group, uh, we know that this is a faith-based group. We know that a lot of people who join this particular group, they have a lot of things that they're mandated to actually get out for the masses. And so an outline helps to minimize those distractions. An outline will help you minimize those insecurities. And it'll keep you on target because you're beginning to plot out where it is that you should go. When I think about writing an outline, I think about um, a GPS system. So we know that GPS systems can fail, but it also gives you the shortest route that you can take. It allows you to know, hey, there's an accident up ahead. Do you need to be rerouted? So when you're thinking about actually um, doing an outline, I'm going to encourage you to do that. Even if it's not a formal outline, you need to begin to map out in some form what it is that you want to say. Why? Because it helps you to um, avoid potential pitfalls. A lot of times when we begin to write, sometimes we get writer's block. But if you have an outline, then you can kind of steer your way back to what it was that you had intended to talk about. Um, another reason why we probably should do outline is because you will know ahead of time if you don't have content that will actually fulfill the number of pages that you're thinking about writing. You will know if your um, ideas are need to be fleshed out. You'll know if your content is weak. Let's be real. You'll know. And when you're looking at this roadmap, when you're looking at your plan for your outline, you will know, okay, you know, this is a really solid um, product that I have. This is something that I can actually now begin to expand upon. Wait a minute. This is kind of out of order. Maybe I need to move and shift some things. Um, if you don't do that before you begin to write, or even after you've started the process, because sometimes I do need to just get out what's in my head. I need to start writing and getting some things on paper. But when I'm done with that particular writing session, I jot down exactly what it is that I want to cover next or what I want to eventually cover. That way I'm not forgetting the ideas. A lot of times the first way that 
we come up with ideas. A lot of times they say, you know, rewrite after rewrite after rewrite. But the initial idea is usually a great idea. It just has to be refined. So I'm a lot of times jotting those things down so that I can make sure that I'm including these points or I'm looking at this and saying, no, nah, it's not really a viable point, but I have it here because it's a part of my outline. If you do that, you're able to move and progress a lot quicker because you know where it is you're going. Another reason I can say that I'm an advocate for an outline is number one, professional writers need them. A lot of times, if you want to move to the level of being a professional writer, and we should all aim towards professionalism, you need to know that a lot of movies, a lot of books and things have been sold just on the basis of their outline. People are not going to waste time a lot of times reading something that may not work for them. But if you have a solid, strong outline, which I like to call your foundation, they can look at this and say, I'm interested. Send me your first chapter. Let me do more. A lot of times you want to speak on platforms with people that have access to, you know, uh, media around the world because we want what we write to spread. They may only go off of your outline and then say, yes, you know, she's amazing. We talk about multiple streams of income. We talk about monetizing what we do. That outline a lot of times will take you places because a lot of times they don't have time to read your entire book. These are busy executives. You want to get to that level so that outline that's fully fleshed out that gives not only just you but other people a roadmap of where you're going will help you to actually achieve more success later on down the line so i have a question so this was so yes, good you i mean you gave lots of tangible reasons i hope i hope you guys are like really putting this into your mind and putting it, in, it in, into your heart because writing an outline does take discipline. It actually isn't the fun part of writing. A lot of times I hear a lot of authors, well, I just want to flow. You know, I don't really need an outline. That's not how I write. And when you come and give your book to us as a publisher, we can tell when you didn't write an outline for most people, okay? Mm -hmm. unless, unless you're just like this amazing stellar writer, which most, most people are not, and it's okay, right? Like most of you don't make your living writing. You're not professional writers and professional authors. We can tell because the way um, God will sometimes give us a uh, bits and pieces of our story. So we might get the beginning one time, then we might get the end, the middle, but you won't know how that story flows unless you have your roadmap, AKA your outline. And so I want you guys to really put this in your heart that you're gonna actually do an outline and you need an outline, okay? So I wanna, I wanna kind of touch on Joyce this whole thing about um, people who feel like, I wanna come slightly corrective mm -hmm. for those who feel like they don't need an outline, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanna talk briefly about when you, what happens, I know you talked about why you need one. I, if you can kind of elaborate on what will happen if you don't have an outline, like for the average person who is not a professional author, can you talk to that? Absolutely, so listen, you master the journey when you know your destination period. You can master the journey when you know your destination. And that is what the outline does. The outline tells you the end result of where you're trying to go. Okay. And so when you don't have an outline, you can get in the middle of what you're writing and be lost. You can, you can be circling back and forth. You can be repeating things that you've already said. You can include things that's completely off topic, especially when you are writing about your life, especially when that you've been through some things. Cause a lot of times, you know, a lot of writers, they write memoirs, they write about the trauma, they write about the deliverance and the things that God has brought them out of. And it's personal to us. It's our journey. So in the middle of that, you can be talking just like you're talking to your cousin or your best friend, not understanding that you've completely veered off. Imagine if, you know, all of you that are believers, the outline, the, the roadmap is almost similar to your Bible. What happens when you feed on the word, when you, it helps you to know where you should go. It should prevent you from falling into temptation and doing things that you know you should not do. The outline is the exact same thing. It's that roadmap. Yes, I, I want to get to your destination. I want to yes. prevent you from, from going outside of temptation. Absolutely. I'm, about to, I'm about to give you guys some pitfalls. And for those of you who are wondering, you're like, okay, what's this outline? We're going to talk a little bit about some of the fundamentals of the outline. And then at the writing party, at the writing party, uh, we have Coach Jasmine that is going to, to help you write your outline. 
By the time you finish the writing party, you should have your outline. Is, can we just say amen to that? That is like amazing. So we're talking through it because, you know, a lot of times we have to break stuff down. We got to educate you first. We got to break down those limiting beliefs because I know it. I've done a bunch of boot camps. I've done, what did we do? We did six six boot camps in 2020 alone, and I've done seven writing challenges. So you're talking about 13 different groups of authors that I've had to explain why you need an outline. So there's nothing you can tell me that can convince me that you don't need one, okay? So let's talk about it really quickly. The first thing that y'all do when y'all don't have an outline is when a write, you try to, you have this uh, superficial word count or page number thing that you, you just feel like you must meet. Now, I know that if you were to go to a traditional publisher, some of them have page number requirements and, and what have you. But if you are self-publishing or if you end up partnering with a company like Beyond the Book Media, we don't have those requirements. We just want you to tell your story to the best of your ability. And so what happens is because you want your book to be 200 pages and you didn't do an outline and you're looking, OK, I got 25,000 words. I want to get 50,000 words because now I'm going to have 200 pages. You start writing a bunch of rambling, a bunch of foolishness. That has nothing to do with your story. And then once it gets in editing, we're reading it and, and we're like, what in the world? They don't talk about this ain't even in the book. This is another book. Now we got two books in one and your authors are, I mean, your readers are confused. And that's what happens when you don't use an outline. So number one, you end up trying to put a bunch of fluff so that you can make superficial um, pages. And you can um, you can have just you, some, some superficial quality about your book that doesn't even matter. That's number one. Number two, and I talked about this with Joyce um, at the beginning of our chat, you won't know when you're done. Like, that's a big deal because we've had people who kept on writing and kept on writing and the story was over. And I noticed some of you, if you've never written before, you're like, how in the world is that possible? It's possible because you've come to the conclusion and now you've picked up probably a sequel or another book and you're trying to cram it in there. But when you write your outline, you know, OK, when I get to this point, when I talk about this topic, I can I can shut my laptop. I'm done. And now I can review or now I can send it on to edit it. And then also your outline when you don't when you don't write your outline. You end up putting you get you can get mixed up in where places where things go. So let's put it in perspective of you sharing your personal testimony or sharing your expertise. Right. Um, when you write an outline, it helps you facilitate the flow of information as it as it's coming from Holy Spirit onto paper. And so even when you think about your memory. Right. You may recall things out of order. And if you just write specifically from your memory that you run the risk of messing up how the story really played out. Does that make sense? Like you may, you may, you might mess that up. So you might be writing about childhood because you're letting it flow. Then all of a sudden you remember what you did two years ago and you started writing that. And then if you're not a professional author, you won't realize that you just switched like that. And then now we're reading it and we're like, hold up. Where? Wait, 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 I thought we were just, huh, you know, and now your, your, your reader is confused. They close your book and it's a wrap. They're never going to finish. If they don't finish your book, there's no reviews. Uh, what did you say? Write the book that for people who are going to share it. You won't get people who are shared. And yeah. So I want to know if you have anything to add on that, Joyce, about just kind of pitfalls when you don't write the outline. Like what happens when you just try to flow if you're not a professional author? Well, I like the word that you use, superficial. Sometimes you don't even um, know that you're not getting into the meat of what needs to be inside your book because you haven't taken the time to organize your ideas. You are, especially when you're writing about your life, you're attached to it. I know me. So you just assume that you can just get in there and start flowing. But like you said, it's it flows from the Holy Spirit onto your paper. So the Holy Spirit and God is a God of order. He's the God of structure. Look at your roadmap, your biblical roadmap, your Bible. It's divided, mm -hmm. right? There's headings. And so when you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in terms of how to flow and structure your book, do you know what needs to be taken out of? You know what needs to be put into place and you minimize your time. A lot of people struggle with writer's block. Well, sweetie, if you have an outline, then you just go back. <laughs> Let's be real. You go back to and look at your points, right? You look at your sub points. 
It will also help you to see, do I not have enough content? Mm -hmm. As you begin to write, if you're struggling, and I tell my students this all the time, because for the last several years, I've, I've been teaching 10th and we do argumentative essays and they will choose a side to argue that they're most closely attached but when they begin to get into the all line, miss, I can't come up with more than two points. I don't have any, you know, um, reasons. I don't have any details, and I don't have any examples. I said, well, that's probably not the side that you need to be arguing on. But because you can look at that outline and tell, man, I have one point, no sub points. I don't have any examples. Can't really think of any reasons. You need to go back then and choose the other side. So when I'm having them to brainstorm, um, this, I make them brainstorm both sides of the argument, and then they're able to. Look Look at the one that has the most and organize it that way. If you wait until you 15, 20, 30 pages in, and then all of a sudden you realize, wow, I don't know if I have enough to finish it. I'm not quite sure where I need to be. This, this is this something that's kind of off here. All of that can be prevented if you take the time to discipline yourself. Like you said, it's not the fun part of writing. I'm a witness because I can think back on now I have to do that because I can think back on the times where, oh my God, this is good because I started and I'm most of what I write is fiction right. So how do you think your favorite shows can give you that wild season finale? Because they begin with the end in mind. They already know where they're going. They know all that's the little favorite stories. phrase. That's Joyce, it. Joyce, you know I know so be the cousin who's all the time. killer. I say this all the time. Begin with the end in Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. That's that's a that's a business tip across the board. Anything that I plan, I, I always think about what is the goal? What is the end goal? And then I always work back. So I um I don't necessarily tell my bio, I'm an engineer by trade. So I have a bachelor's degree and master's degree in chemical engineering. And so one of the things that we learned growing up, and I said growing up in college, and when I worked in industry, is you were always presented with a problem. And you had to reverse engineer what happened. You had to prove out what happened and how you got to this problem. And, and so what that did was that trained my mind to think about, okay, well, if at the end of the day, I want people, I, the transformation I want is for people to do X, Y, Z. What do I need to put in this book to make sure that X, Y, Z actually occurs? And then you can create your outline like that. So you think about your book as a place that as a, as a tool to give transformation. I always talk about that in all my classes. Your book should transform. I know even Joyce, she does fiction work, but there's a transformation that is happening even in fiction work. If you're writing nonfiction work, if you're writing about your, yourself, what is it that you want the reader? What do you want the reader to do to take away with? And your book should follow that roadmap. Okay, so I'll let you kind of pick up back there. You can go back to what you were saying. I just, that just, you, that's my phrase right there. Yeah, that was good. As you were talking, I was just thinking about um, sometimes people struggle with not wanting to write uh, an outline because they struggle with control. Ooh. They want to do it how they want to do it. Um, but if you're going to, to walk in excellence, if you're going to do um, everything in excellence, then you're going to have to make sure that you do the hard work. You have to do the things that you may not want to do. You need to make sure that you're following an outline. A lot of times we don't, um, and you know, let's just be real. Let's think about it in terms of like taking time to meditate, taking time to, to hear from God. Sometimes our mind is always what busy. We just want to jump right into the, to the main point. But if we follow the standard or topic of prayer, we talk about, you know, adoration and glorifying God versus we don't just jump right into give me this, give me that. There's no difference than walking through an outline or beginning to plan and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying before you just delve into the story. Now, that does, even if you just start writing, because a lot of times we'll get inspiration, we'll get the words and they will flow and we're recording ourselves um, or we're writing, that's fine. But at some point, like I said, when I end my writing session, I even if I didn't for some reason do a full outline, I map out where I want it to go next. I take a moment and go back and look at, okay, so this is what happened in this section. And see, when you're, when you're in dealing with like fiction writing, when you're dealing with plays and film, time is everything. Time is money, as they say in the industry. So when I go into the large theater spaces and they tell you that intermission has, and you tell them intermission happens at this time, they're blinking those lights <laughs> to let people know, hey, this is a getting ready to be intermission. But if I have in time the one minute, one page, I'm off. Now I'm spending extra money. I'm going, it, it just shifts and causes a whole bunch of problems. And so in some form, you need to be able to discipline yourself. We're, we're not trying to take away your creativity. 
We're not trying to make you right a certain way or to fit in this certain a certain type of paradigm. That's not what we're doing. What we're saying is that if you want to work smarter, not harder, if you want to be efficient, if you want to minimize pitfalls and distractions and wasting your time and make sure that what you have created and put together is valuable, it's good, it's going to reach, touch, save lives and move, then an outline really is the best way to go. However you do it, you need to put together an outline. It's it's your roadmap. It's your guideline. So how many of you are getting your whole life about this whole outline thing, right? <laughs> I want to know in the comments. Let me let me know in the comments if you are realizing why you need an outline and why some of you have been writing your book for 20 years. <laughs> like you started writing the book when you first had your son and he's 35 now. It's time for you to get that book on the outline, sis. Get an outline. No, I'm just joking. But seriously, in all seriousness, like I almost can almost guarantee those of you who've been struggling to write books and have been trying to write your book, you probably don't have an outline because um, so we have our challenge pack and then it was a 21 day um, book writing planner. And in the top part, there is an outline. Look, someone said the outline is your lifeline. I like that. Hold on. Let me see. The out Go ahead, uh, Dr. Monique. The outline is your lifeline. And so what I love about the outline is it's going to accelerate your what you need to attack. And so in our 21 day uh, writing boot camp that we have, and we actually are starting our, our next cohort actually in like two weeks, I think. Um, we are really adamant about you following your, your outline, like really, really adamant. And so one of the things we tell you is to pick a section a day and you can do that and you'll know exactly when you're done. So you can say, you know what, I'm going to pick chapter one. You have your chapter one outline and you'll know, okay, oh, I'm done here. Okay. I've marked off that point. I marked off that point. I marked off that point. Okay. Wow. Now I can rest. Or not to take a break. And then it actually gives you relief and a sense of accomplishment. Let's 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 um talk about that. When you have an outline and you are able to see, it's like you have a temperature gauge as to where you are in your writing process. Can you talk to that a little bit, um, Joyce? It is. It it also helps you to um, you, you should you feel a sense of accomplishment. It makes it also look doable. I know that you know how you take things and you can break it up into chunks. I think it was a saying or something about how do you eat an elephant or something one bite at a time. That's exactly what the outline does. The process doesn't have to be so overwhelming. I've been trying to get this book out for years, but if you are taking, like you said, section by section point by point. It gives you milestones. It gives you an opportunity to now celebrate. Wow, well, look at this. I was only going to talk about three things. Um, I outlined it. I, I wrote about these three things and I accomplished it. Those three points may only be 10 pages. And I love how you said we're not focusing on page number. We're not focusing on Mm -hmm. accounts because that was a big hang up of mine because I'm a long way from what industry standards would say fiction writing. And I'm like, I don't have another 30,000. And God was like, well, you're writing the story that I gave you. So whose page count are you following? And so I'm like, oh, well, OK, then. But you, when you are able to, to actually see that, that outline is what will get you there. That outline will give you those main points. It helps you to break it into chunks. It helps it to not seem so overwhelming. It's it's really the guide point. It's, it's the railing almost to keep you from falling over and going into places that you don't need to be. So that's good. All right. So I'm about to give you guys a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. I am not an English teacher. I am not uh, an editor. Y'all, I barely can spell. <laughs> but one thing I know, I know how to put things into formulas and to create processes for them, right? And so that is why these things work for me because as someone who was formally diagnosed with ADHD, yes, I was, like I will be literally all over the place. So I write an outline for everything. I write an outline. I'm thinking about, okay, I want this. So it's going to take this, 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 and this. Oh, I can break this down. Let me do some algebra on this first chapter. Let me break it down. Okay, so now we have a beginning, middle, and end. What do I want to accomplish? So I take my chapters, y'all, and I make them into mini goals. Does, it, does this make sense? So we have a big goal, and then we have each chapter is a mini goal. There is a mini Thing, thing that I want to accomplish. And together with them added all together is going to accomplish the big overall goal. So let's say if I'm writing a book on 
um let's see what's the first thing? love we're gonna choose love that's the first thing that came came to mind so if i'm saying you know how to um fall more back in love with yourself i don't know maybe this is somebody's book i'm probably helping somebody that's what i'm picking up in the spirit so i'm not writing a book about how to love myself right the overall thing that i want the the read the reader to walk away with is a better understanding of how to love themselves that is the big goal. That is the end in mind. When they finish reading the book, they're going to know how to love themselves, okay? Now, there are certain things that need to take place in order to tell the whole story to get them to loving themselves. So then I'm gonna break down in my outline, I'm gonna have some main points, which are going to be my chapters that are going to be many uh, goals or many lessons Right. And this works for anything. I'm just using this as an example. Many lessons that are going to ultimately build up to making sure that they love themselves. So I might say love myself spiritually. That may be main point one. Main point two might be love myself physically. OK, that may be main point two. Main point three may be uh, love myself mentally. OK, the main point number four may be love, love my love my um, my friendships. OK, love my relationships or something, you know, and then I don't know what the, um, the, the the fifth point might be. Love my purpose. OK, and these are all different in, in aspects. So the big goal is I want to love myself better. The many goals that are going to teach you how to love yourself. I broke them down into five main points. So those five main points can be my chapters. OK, so then if I'm talking about loving myself uh, spiritually as my first goal, my first thing I want to talk about, I'm going to break that down even further. OK, and then I'm going to create secondary points. What do I need to express to the reader? What do I need to express to the reader to make sure that they are loving themselves spiritually? So my my um, my secondary points might be uh, uh, start my day in prayer. My second point might be um, uh, listen to worship music. My third point might be um, find a church. So those might be my third secondary points that support my main point, that, oh, that, that support the overall goal. And so then you can break it down as, as deep as you want. And then you'll go and you'll move through all, remember I told y'all five things, right? I don't remember off the top of my head because I'm flowing right now, but and what happens is when you have that, then guess what, y'all? I don't have to start at the beginning. I can start. You know what? I really want to talk about loving myself physically. So I can start there when I get ready to write it. So that's pretty. I don't know, Joyce, if you want to add anything. I was trying to give them a, a, a visual and understanding of like how this thing really works and how I just created somebody's whole book in like two minutes. Right. Right. And that, you know, you know, that was spot on. And, it, and it's a simple process. And so, you know, some people says, well, I'm, you know, I'm not I'm a, a free library person. I'm the, that person that has to be able to fly. But there's freedom in control. You know how I, I have to liken it back to just things of the spirit. Well, following Christ means that you're restricted. It means that you, you know, you have to live this type of, you know, you can't have fun. No, it just gives you the right structures and it gives you the, the, the pacing and the guideline that you need. Because think about it. If, if the goal is to write a book about how to love myself, you can clearly look at that outline before you begin to write and say, OK, well, I said that I was going to love myself um, spiritually, which means I'm going to be spending time with God. So anything that takes away from that time so I can know who I am, I can just make sure that, you know, I have that included. And if, it, and if it's not a part of that, I can strike that off the list. You're not wasting time writing about things that you shouldn't be writing about. Just like if you're saying I'm going to love myself spiritually and I'm going to spend time with God. then when I'm in my prayer time, I'm not answering my DMs. You know and why? Because it becomes the distracting distractions, those things that should not fit in your life, i.e. in your book. And that's what the outline allows you to do. It gives you a clear roadmap, a clear picture 
of where you should be going. And anything else does not make it into that book. Just like you said, that's the sequel. That's, you know, that's, that's the, you know, your talking points for your workshops or that's the work book. You know, it's a lot of different things that you can spin it with, but we have to be able to know how to outline said guidelines for our book, just like we said guidelines for our time, our relationship, all of those things. And so it really just, it, it really helps you to be better. It makes what you're writing stronger. And if your goal is to really to, to help people, because a lot of the, the people that are in your audience is to tell their stories and to share, to, you know, to bring about deliverance and freedom and healing and, and wellness, then that you want to hear from the Holy Spirit and put exactly what it is that he's saying for you to do into that book. And the outline is going to be able to allow you to see that parrot pattern stick to it when opposition and distractions and all of those things come no i'm standing firm this is where i should go this is what should be here i think last night i heard um you talk about writing about things where you're not healed at in certain areas and so when you begin to flow and write through that because it's a partnership between you and the holy spirit when you begin to put that outline into place now it's like mm -mm strike mm -mm, strike versus just going on your own without any guidelines and writing in areas where you're not supposed to write and so now you're circling back because if you truly yielded he'll tell you and you got to circle back and delete all of the mm -hmm. things that should not have been there before and so when you're done with the outline now you're saying okay let, let's look at what we have is this good have I missed anything, Holy Spirit? Should I add anything? You can now have that dialogue before you even begin the process of writing. And as you get into the process of writing, when all of those things that will come to stop you or slow you down happen, no, 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 this is what we talked about. This is what you told me to put in there. This is what you told me to take out of. And so this is what will go into this book and it will be done well. It will be done speedily and it's going to go to the masses. That is so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a few minutes before we have a writing party. Yes. So if you're not familiar with the writing parties, they're where, they are where we all get on Zoom, y'all. We're going to get on Zoom together. And Coach Jasmine is going to coach you through writing your outline. So y'all, it's Saturday. Y'all ain't got nothing to do. Make sure that you get on the writing party. The Zoom link was sent to your email. That's going to start at 8 o'clock. Um, and there's probably some people already on there. They said they're going to get their spot. But before we release you guys to get on the Zoom party, I do want to open it up for questions. If you have any questions uh, for um, Miss Joyce while she's here, while you have her um, to even get prepared for tonight as we get ready to go to the writing party of night two, um, let me know in the comments and we will do our best to ask them. And while we're waiting for, because, you know, it's always a delay here, while we are waiting for that, um, Joyce, do you have anything else that you just feel like is really important uh, when it comes to outlining? Yeah, um, one of the things that you can do as you begin to um, think about, like you said, introduction, main points, secondary points, You there is still freedom in the outline because there are eight different organizational patterns. So you can write in a different organizational pattern within that same guideline. So mm -hmm. you... You know what I'm talking about. A lot of your people write about their life story. So most people will choose chronological. So they'll start at this point in their life and then they will move in order according to time periods. And those main points will be this first chunk of the year of my life that I'm going to talk about and everything that happened in that particular um that particular year but i just wanted to briefly introduce you to some a, a different way you you can use the outline like the one that chanel created and instead of always telling things chronologically you can maybe tell things in sequences step by step how i learned to love myself and you can divide it with step one i did abc mm -hmm. first the time from when i didn't love myself up to the time that I begin to love myself, which would have been chronological. You can also um, do it in terms of like comparing contrast, what I look like before, same pattern that of an outline, main point, sub point, and now what I look like now, or you can do, you know, cause and effect. This is what happened to make me not love myself. And this was the effect and you can go cause effect, cause effect, and now here's the end result. So there's still ways to make it interesting. A lot of times when we read memoirs and documentaries of famous people, we read because we know them and we want to hear their story. But a lot of what we're doing, we're being introduced to the world. 
we're being introduced to the masses. So sometimes if you start back back in 1959 when I was a four year old girl, mm -hmm. knowing that the main part of your story was when you were 31, it's probably not gonna work because they don't they're not invested with you mm -hmm. yet. That's so good. If it was Michelle Obama, well, girl, what happened when you were five? But for right. you know, for people that don't necessarily know you yet, you want to hear that I was broken. This is what happened to me when I was 47. And and these are the things that happened. And then you can begin to take us back to that time period. So, you know, try playing around with cause and effect and comparing contrast and doing some things like process and problem and solution within still the outline because you still want to break them down, main point, secondary point. So it doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be tried and true do it this way. You can tweak it and put some icing on the cake and make it sound real, real good to draw people in for them to be able to connect with what it is that you're saying. So I have another question for you. Yes. Well, we have one question. It says Tracy Lynn Jackson, and we've gotten quite a few questions about content. I know mm -hmm. people are really concerned. Uh, so they said, how do you know when your content is enough versus weak? And I think that goes along with the, okay, page, page numbers does not dictate if your content right. is enough. Can you speak to that? Say what it is that you're supposed to say and then be quiet. That's number one. So that's when you know enough is enough. Now, when you whether you know something is weak or not, how well can you develop it? How many examples, how many instances can you talk about under that particular main point? So that's how you'll know, do I have enough to really sustain several pages of dialogue um, as I'm looking at my sub points, A, B, C, D, how many points, if you can only come up with one point that, you know, what made me distrust men and you can only think of one thing and one major event, then that's probably not, there's probably another story in that that you need to be telling because there's not enough coming from it. It's almost like when you did, you go in, and you you're ordering something from the restaurant but all you get is the meat if you don't have the lettuce and the mayo and the mustard or whatever else it is to make that a full complete sandwich then now you know you're looking at a weak product so you need to go back and re reevaluate what it is that you're saying with that particular point maybe that's not the point that um you need to be discussing there and so um that's how um one way you can tell when it's weak content, but when enough is enough is when you when you know that you've gotten out everything that the Holy Spirit has told you to get out, or when you have outlined what you need to put on paper. Okay, so my next, uh, we have another question. I thought this is good because you write poetry. So they ask, what are your suggestions for outlining a poetry book? Um, one thing you can do is you can do a topical. So if you have certain topics that and the poems fall under that topic, you can um, outline them according to topic. You can outline them according to, to themes. Um, if it's a free write type poetry style, then that's you don't have to worry about that because it's just you expressing yourself. So what I would suggest is go back and look at your poetry and see if there are common themes that reoccur. And if so, then organize according to those themes or those topics. If not, you want to hit them hard, start with your strongest, put a little bit of, you know, this is pretty good, you know, this is an okay poem in the middle, and then give them something to remember at the end. And so it's almost like when you're watching that movie in the first five seconds grab you, and now you want to know more because how did that happen? Or who was that that just was, you know, was killed? And it begins to develop you through that. So if you don't have a pattern, then you can just go with your strongest points and, you know, pat it in the middle and then end and give them something to talk about at the end. Okay, thank you. So we've gotten a lot of questions about planners and journals. Y'all know that's what I do. Um, I, I create planners and journals in my sleep. And so I'm going to answer this question. What are your suggestions for outlining a planner? It, and it depends on people use the term planner and journal interchangeably, but they're two totally different things or sometimes they can be a little bit of both. So like if y'all can see back there, it's my God bless described prophetic journal, which is also a planner, but I still wrote an outline. So again, let's think about this. What is the goal of the planner or the journal? That's the first thing. Remember, we talked about design with the end in mind. So once you know what the goal is, actually, I'm sitting up here. Here we go. I have one right here. So y'all see this? We'll, so we'll use this one. Write your book in seven days. Okay. This is a planner slash journal because they have spaces for you to write in and the ultimate goal is the title write your book in seven days that's the big goal 
So everything inside of this thing is going to be geared towards helping you write your book in seven days. Now, when you open this up, the very I wrote and I did do an outline for this. OK, I did an outline. And what I did was I have specific things that I wanted. So the first thing that I wanted was a table of contents. If y'all can see that, then I wanted people to understand what this was, how to use it. OK, so that's the first part, because if I say write your book in seven days and I don't tell you how to do it, you're not going to finish it. Then the next thing I wanted to do, um, because we are faith based, I wanted you to have some supernatural strength. So I put a prayer for authors that was in there because that was one section. Now, you're the, it's not chapters in here. It's sections just because I'm not necessarily telling a story, but I'm showing I'm taking you through a process. Now, because I need you to finish your book in seven days, I have a planner part, a checklist, because now I need you to finish your planner and I need you to finish your book in seven days. So I thought about, OK, what are all the pieces that you need to finish your book in seven days? Then next, we have an outline example, right? I need you to outline your book. I need you to outline your book. And so I put that in here and I have it where you can outline your book and you can finish it in seven days. And so and then after that, I wanted you to be able to create your outline. So I have sections for you to write your outline inside. If you guys have the 21 day planner that was offered in the challenge pack, it's you know, it's a it's a longer version of this. Then I also wanted you to um, have a place for you to keep notes throughout the day as you were writing um, this and make this become like your writing notebook, not for you to write your book, but for you to jot things down. Why was because I didn't want you to have this planner and also have to have a notebook. I didn't want you to have to have both. Well, I wanted you to keep all of your stuff in one, one thing, because again, we're talking about acceleration. I'm trying to keep everything into one place. Okay. So then you have this, and I made it so that you can have notes, which makes it more of uh, more of a journal hybrid. So does that make sense? I put in all the pieces that I felt you needed that were going to make you successful and because I'm not there to coach you through it uh, to finishing your journal in seven days. So let's see. I think I pretty much answered. <laughs> Where can you purchase the book? You can actually get it if you want to print it. You can get it for free. It's somewhere in in right with me somewhere, but it's on Amazon. Um, I discontinued really promoting this because we don't do this. We discontinued our seven day challenge. We have our twenty one day boot camps, so I don't really promote it. But uh, it is on one of those. It's in, it's in right. It's in a Facebook group somewhere, y'all. I'm sure y'all can find it. it's a link directly for you to download. All right. Anybody else have any final questions before we wrap up? And while we're waiting for one more question, Joyce, do you have any kind of closing remarks or anything you want to make sure people take away from this conversation and from getting to know you? Um, this was this was fun. This was am amazing. I am excited to really see what's going to be birthed out of you know this particular challenge and all of the ones that you continue to do. Um, I think the biggest thing you hit dead on the nail is what's the goal? When you were talking about your planner, you knew that you wanted them to be able to write a book in seven days. Think about what your goal is and how you would get people to that goal. So what is what what is your purpose for writing your book? This is my purpose. And these are the things I need them to know. And that's what goes into your um, outline. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, the other thing is that you don't have to do the outline for the entire book at one time. Sometimes it may not flow that way. But if you can take a section and just walk through that section and outline it and then write, I guarantee you, once you move forward, the ideas will continue to come because you've already taken that first step. And then now, OK, well, then I can go here next. I can go there next. Talk with someone, you know, start talking through your idea. As you begin to talk, they spark creativity and you'll begin to, OK, well, this could be the second section and you outline it. So don't allow the process to be overwhelming. But you can do it. It's necessary. It's needed. And I think that you'll see that the product will be much, much more polished at the end. OK, 
I think, let's see, Chanel and Joyce, thank you for your nuggets. All right, I want to know in the comments if you're going to join us at the writing party that's going on in about seven minutes. Let me know in the comments if you're coming to the writing party. I have a seat for you. I have a virtual seat for you. You're going to hang out with me, um, some of the other coaches, Beyond the Book Media coaches. And also, I believe, I forgot who the main coach is. I think it's, oh, Jasmine. Coach Jasmine is going to teach you how to do the, your outline. So you guys have gotten all the information. You're ready. You know, you know why you need to do it. And listen, if your friend, if you know your friend signed up for this challenge, you didn't see them on here, make sure they get on the call tonight, the eight o'clock call, okay? So that you guys can um, finish your outline. All right, well, I see all I see all these, I'll be there, I'll be there. Look, I'll be there, mm. I'll be there. Look, oh, come on, y'all better be accountable. Y'all better be accountable. What's this, you already, <laughs> look, Pam said she already in there. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Look, y'all are so hungry. Y'all are so hungry. Um, so, all right, y'all. Well, I think we've pretty much wrapped up everything. Joyce, thank you, thank you, thank you. You never disappoint. And y'all, Joyce is one of our staple teachers inside of the 21 Day Author Bootcamp. We're going to be opening up registration for that tomorrow. I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so don't worry about that yet. Let's just get these outlines done so that you can have your book mapped out. It is a three day map your book out challenge. Okay. So to, tonight we're getting ready to go to the uh, writing party in the morning at 6 a.m. Y'all prayer. Come on. I know it's Sunday. I know. But before you get your Jesus at your church, go ahead and join us at 6 a.m. inside of Write With Me. That's number one. Number two, we have a midday motivation. So some of you are going to continue working on your outlines because you may not finish tonight. And so come in and get motivated by Dr. Monique Rogers. She has just been fire, has been coming out of her mouth. OK. And then after that, we're going to have another speaker session. We're going to be talking about creating streams, where the money resides, where the money resides. Hey. We're going to be talking about creating multiple streams of income from your book. And then we're going to do a, a, a virtual, right, a virtual lab, marketing lab, where we're going to talk about just some things. I'm going to give you some tangible, practical strategies on what one book can do. Y'all have seen me do it. I have my God bless the scribe. I sell that book every time I get in prophetic planning for your day, right? It has been a, a consistent stream of revenue. Um, so we're going to talk through some of like more like a chat where I'm going to give you guys tips on how to map out the vision for your book. So that's going to be tomorrow night in the writing party. I'll be closing us out. So, um, I just want to say I love y'all and I thank you so much and we'll see you over in Zoom. All right, guys. All right.